one more step, and I'll have isolated the virus of the common cold, laryngitibus hackabus. Lodium Fosdex, check. Antiproton ballast, check. Prepare afterburners for blast off. job is how to keep from disturbing the parents and getting them in a tizzy. Rock a bye doggy in the treetop. When the wind blows, the cradle will rock. And so, after answering the $64 million question correctly, I decided to take a few trips around the world. About time we threw a little light on the subject. First thing you gotta do is get their attention. Comfy? Have I got your attention? Okay, let's straighten out a few facts about you and the Army. Now then. Oh, oh uh, excuse me just a minute. rock a bye doggy in the treetop. When the wind blows, the cradle will rock. You know, Ralphie, it's a funny thing. But every high school senior I've ever known thinks that when he gets into the service, all his buddies will look like a bunch of lower Slobovians. Of course, there's always one exception. You. Actually, they're going to be pretty much like the guys you're graduating with. Just plain old characters like Roy Robinson from Jefferson High in Portland, Oregon. Don Osgood from Page, Nebraska. Pete Willoughby, Los Angeles State College. Dick Martin from St. Peter's High in Worcester, uh, pardon me, Worcester, Massachusetts. Oh, well. Nice guys who wash their teeth every day, get their hair cut regular, well, fairly regular. Just a neck trim, please. Uh, yes, sir. Just a neck trim. Well, what do you know? There was a human being under that pelt after all. Another interesting idea held by a lot of otherwise bright high school seniors is that the Army has all the right size clothing, but that it's mainly interested in getting it on all the wrong size people. Well, nice comic book stuff. But actually, the Army's no more interested in putting you into the wrong size uniform than your football coach would be. And for the same reason. It's not necessary, it's inefficient, and it's just plain sloppy. In other words, you'd be pretty useless to yourself or the team. You know, according to some comic strip artists, our fiend here, uh, our friend here, is the kind of non-com you find in the army. The way they tell it, uh, basic training supposed to be nothing but KP, obstacle courses, and being chewed out by a bunch of sadistic sergeants. Hey, hold up! Hum! Hoop! Hum! 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 As a matter of fact, the Army's not about to use inefficient comic strip non-coms or officers any more than it would use outdated or inefficient weapons. No, the non-coms you're gonna get acquainted with in basic will be very capable guys, and they'll be there for just one reason to help you. You'll get to know men like Paratrooper Sergeant Mike Culhane, Master Sergeant Johnny Broderick from Okinawa in Korea, Corporal Tommy Webster, a high school senior when you were a junior, Sergeant Rod McCollum. He carries the Congressional Medal of Honor. 
Uh, look, as long as we're on the subject, let's take a look at basic training and find out what it's really going to be like. Well, uh, you're going to learn a few things at basic. Useful things, like how to handle weapons safely and effectively. And at 700 yards, I let him have it. You're taught to use a compass, how to read a map. Very impressive stuff later to the girl of your dreams. You'll learn how to pitch a camp and how to give first aid. Uh, the sort of knowledge that other uh, people will respect someday. You're also going to develop muscles that'll be useful later. Uh, some you didn't even know you had. But then, uh, it's not a bad idea to keep in shape for recreation, like boxing, football, skiing, and other uh, sports. You're going to learn to snap a salute to all officers. Now, where'd that custom come from? Well, the way I heard it, the only way one knight could recognize another knight under those cast iron tuxedos was to lift his visor. It's a sort of hello among military men. Then one day, you're going to suddenly realize that you're beginning to look like and act like a soldier or a man. And you'll be surprised to find that you're very proud to be serving your country in the United States Army. Oh, uh, a short intermission. Rock a bye, doggy, in the treetop. When the wind blows, the cradle will rock. Okay, basics finished. Now what? Well, according to some comic strips, more endless months of KP, policing some forgotten post, and learning how to artistically goof off. But mainly, the rest of your army career is supposed to be spent doing anything you're most unfit for. Humorous stuff, no doubt, but not good sense. Actually, the army wants to send you where you'll be most useful and where you can serve the best. Where this will be is uh, determined to a great extent by those interviews and aptitude tests you took in your first days as a recruit. So the chances are that, but wait, just a minute. Maybe you'd like to know before you start how you're going to spend your army career. Maybe you'd like to choose the training you want and not leave it up to chance. If so, then the army has a special deal you'll want to hear about. It's called Reserved For You. And in it, you pick the job training you want before you enlist. The army then reserves that position in the world's finest technical schools until you complete basic training. And now, let's go back to those dreams of yours. Uh, how about laboratory work in the medical field? The Army has some of the finest laboratory facilities, technicians, and scientists in the world. Well, that's just one of 127 courses offered by the Army. How about that dream of working with rockets or atomic power? How about guided missiles? You choose it, the Army's got it. The only ticket you need to this program is one high school diploma. Sound good? Well, I can make it sound better. The whole deal is guaranteed by this letter, written to you by the Adjutant General of the United States Army. You don't sign anything until that letter is firmly in your hands. Fair enough? Let's see, uh, adventure? Pick your branch. How about a real elite outfit? Armor. Tank Commander Phillips. Not bad. Travel? Man, you do ask the nicest questions. This is Paris, and it's no dream. It's solid, and it's yours. Ralph Phillips, USA. Sound pretty choice? Your local recruiter can fill in all the details, today, if you like. But remember that you're going to look a lot bigger to the Army with that high school diploma under your arm. Oh, uh, quick warning, though, Ralphie. You can only grab one of these special deals before you receive your induction notice. So why not call on the Army before the Army calls on you? <laughs> What's the matter with you? You gone nuts or something? It's reserved for you.